one of the primary ways that I identify myself is as a maker. Once I got to MIT as a freshman, I found an extracurricular activity that really caught my eye. It was called Trash and Show, and it was all about creating fashion out of unconventional materials to promote a theme of sustainability. My first design, seen on the left here, was made of trash bags, duct tape, and plastic party tablecloths. One of my later designs, seen on the right, was made primarily out of old books and lace curtains and was held together with paper clips and binder rings. I decided to take a famous class at MIT called Toy Product Design. It sounded fun and it would give me the chance to explore mechanical engineering. My inner maker was satisfied and at the same time I was learning the math and science behind product design. Later I took a class on manufacturing where we created 50 BB-8 yo-yos that moved like the actual character from Star Wars. For my capstone design project, my team worked to create a hands-free sheet music page turner. We interviewed different musicians to learn about their needs and even visited a musical instrument workshop to learn about what kinds of tools and techniques should be used to create something that fits the look and feel of a professional instrument. I began finding opportunities in the world of engineering for entertainment. I had the chance to prototype and build an escape room that was themed around being stuck in a jar of candy. It started with a storyboard of an experience and I created a mini model of the room with pipe cleaner humans playing around on real jelly beans. I also went to work for an animatronics company. This company creates dinosaurs and other animatronic creatures for theme parks and Broadway shows. I got the opportunity to work with the sculptural fabrication team to try and determine a more efficient way to make dinosaur skins. Usually they're completely hand designed with each scale cut by hand and arranged. Instead, I tried using a mold to get a bunch of scale shapes at once. Then I attached them to a styrofoam block before covering them with epoxy and fiberglass so they could eventually be painted. This significantly decreased the time it would take to create dinosaur skins and it was really neat to get to help with that process. All of these experiences have taught me the secret about art and STEM. In fact, they don't need to be combined. They are one and the same. The examples go on. People who sew use patterns and measurements the way engineers use and create engineering drawings to know how to build something. Perfecting recipes is really running a series of chemistry experiments and drawing scientific conclusions. Poetry and programming are both all about precision in choosing words to have a specific outcome, whether that's evoking an emotion or giving an instruction to a computer. Crochet topology is actually a category of math. Mathematicians have been using crochet to understand complex geometries of structures. Additionally, the way you have to keep track of stitches and patterns really requires precision and mathematical thinking. And beginning to connect the dots that all my creating and crafting as a child was the same as the iterating and prototyping that I do as an engineer and as a designer. It was never framed that way for me growing up because I saw a very different narrative of engineering and science portrayed. I wasn't interested in cars or airplanes, so I didn't think mechanical engineering would be interesting to me. At the same time, I was building and creating things, not realizing that what I was really doing was building up my engineering skills. A lot of times people will say to me, oh, it's so interesting that you have interests in these very different areas. But to me, it's they're one and the same. It's two sides of who I am. And I think being an artist makes me a better engineer and being an engineer makes me a better artist.